Hey Internet, my name is Abby and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program on Wings. Today we are flying to the South Pole. Last episode we successfully returned from the North Pole mission and today it's time to head off again to the North, uh, South Pole. Um, we have the same pilots as last time because I wasn't sure if I should use any from the new subscribers to become a pilot. And yes, that's why we have again Kirk and myself as our pilots in this episode. Also, I've improved our uh, aircraft design a little bit. I have removed this um, tank in the left, in the rear of our spacecraft um, aircraft and moved it in front of it. Additionally, I have added some fuel tanks uh, below the wings to have some additional fuel because I want also uh, to find out of if my aircraft is able to do a flight all around Kerbin and to do so uh, my aircraft needs some extra fuel and I will uh, figure out if these two extra tanks will give me um, enough fuel to do so or if I uh, need to redesign the whole aircraft to be able to fly a uh, round trip around Kerbin um, because I have the impression that I will run out of fuel if I'm using this um, build of aircraft as it is today. So let's find out by using these uh, two extra tanks and as soon as they are run out of fuel I will um, decouple them and they will drop down to the surface and we are um, have a light aircraft again without any further drag produced by these um, external fuel tanks so we are good to go to reach our goal of the South Pole. Again and as in our uh, North Pole mission we will head off um, from Kerbal Space Center as you have seen right now and we will fly with a southern heading and again climb up as high as we could so we fly around um, again in an altitude around 20,000 meters to have a high cruising speed and to um, reduce our uh, fuel consumption of this aircraft. So, um, as you might know already, I'm recording these episodes during the weekend, so um, if you have um, commented on my last episode as I was explaining the navigation methods um, which are currently used in aviation, I'm not right able to answer them in this episode because, well, um, this is still the same weekend and also the upcoming, um, the upcoming episode won't cover it as well because well it's also recorded at the same weekend so if you're um, looking forward for an answer the um, what is this this might be episode 12 so in episode 14 you can expect an answer if you wrote any comment um, yes so um, much about that um, what's next we have also another um, time shifts um, or paradox scene in time because I'm still looking forward to the launch of the MAVEN satellite uh, which will hopefully take place on November 18th but um, the weather forecast is a little bit uncertain about it and there might be some clouds and some cumulus um, clouds so um, the launch of the uh, Maven might be postponed to a later date, but hopefully it will take place on Monday the 18th so we can um, see this launch and follow this launch watching NASA TV or, or um, watching it via the live stream on spaceflightnarrow.com which is almost uh, which is also NASA TV but streamed via the spaceflightnow.com also spaceflightnow.com has a nice um, mission coverage feature they are upgrading a uh, web page with the latest information and they are cover the whole progress of the mission so it's really interesting um, reading spaceflightnow.com every day okay 
so much about that. I'm really looking forward to see this um, Maven launch because I'm really interested in the outcome of this mission. The Maven satellite will travel um, all the way up to Mars and um, after it reached there in about 10, ma 10 months, I guess, it will start to analyze the upper atmosphere of Mars to um, find out why Mars is such a desert today and what has happened to Mars during the first evolution of it and why uh, what has happened to the atmosphere and yeah to find out more about the evolution of Mars. After the mission is successfully completed um, the the satellite will um, will remain active and won't um, crash into the surface or won't be aband abandoned because um, it will be uh, used as a relay satellite for upcoming or for the Curios Curiosity rover on the Mars and the Martian surface and also to um, be used as relay satellite for uh, uh, maybe upcoming rover missions to the Mars. So it's a really cool looking project. It's a cool project to find out uh, more about our uh, neighbor planet and to uh, maybe discover why it's such a desert and what has happened to the Mars. And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it and I'm really looking forward to see the first results of the Maven um, Maven discoveries in the space around or in the orbit around Mars. Speaking of Maven, I also have to mention again the India Space Corporation. India has also launched um, a Mars Orbiter, but the um, Mars Orbiter from India has already been launched, so it's currently in space around or in an orbit around the Earth and it's doing some um, burns to increase its orbit to uh, prepare its final burn towards the, uh, the long travel towards the Mars. And um, yes, even if the MAVEN launch takes place several days or even weeks after the launch of the India, uh, of India satellite, the Mars, the Maven will arrive at Mars around two days before the um, the other satellite will arrive there because um, Maven is on a direct trajectory. Um, shortly after launch from Earth, it will be injected to the Mars trajectory and don't need any further ar orbit around the Earth to increase its uh, velocity and to finally leave the influence and the sphere of influence of Earth. So yes, it's a little race and Maven will win it um, according calculations. So we can expect Maven to be at Mars two days before the um, satellite of India. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this and um, hopefully both missions will arrive there and also both uh, satellites will uh, work together and have some collaboration. So both will analyze the upper atmosphere of Mars and hopefully find out useful, um, useful things and discover new things why Mars is, is such an empty desert and is here is what it is today. Also I have talked a lot about um, the Russian EVA in last in the uh, North Polar flight, um, the tenth episode of my Let's Play series. And um, yes, I was watching this um, EVA and I really enjoyed it. And one thing that impressed me all the time is the good quality of the uh, video feed because you're watching these um, in real time and you can almost see the current time and space by watching, uh, looking at the watch of the astronauts and you realize, hey, that's the same time as my time here um, on Earth, on the surface of Earth. 
so the um, the video feed is um, played in real time with no um, delay between uh, being covered um, high up high in space above our surface and yes that's that's just amazing and even being able to um, see the current time up there is also impressive because if you are um, seeing the uh, video feeds we've had from the first uh, moon landing back in the year 69 um, it was all blurred and uh, grayish and it wasn't a clear picture and now um, okay it's 50 years later but we have a clear picture from high above our earth from the uh, orbit and we can see so much detail and um, if we see the progress which is made with the LEDI the current satellite around the moon which has uh, tested out the laser um, laser communication which allows to um, stream a high definition movie in what was it about eight minutes or so which would um, under a normal technical um, communication uh, take about what was it eight hours or so so it's a huge amount increase in, uh, in speed and yeah they are expecting to um, send even 3D movies from the Mars or from other um, parts of space high in orbit around the Earth uh, with this new communication method and if we see this and we are um, currently using only the normal communication on the ISS then um, it's so awesome and I'm really looking forward to the upcoming pictures we can expect using this new laser communication method. I'm all the time impressed by the improvements we've made in communication and also space travel and um, yes, um, well, <laughs> I don't know how I should really express my feelings or how I'm um, enjoying the fact that we are making such a great progress over the last 50 years and um, it's just amazing so um, yeah I'm so so enjoying all the pictures and all the upcoming uh, missions in space and yes I am really looking forward to the near future and speaking of near future, I'm also um, following the progress of the Orion spacecraft. The Orion spacecraft will be NASA's upcoming um, manned space capsule, uh, which should also carry man in deep space uh, to the moon and even beyond the moon and maybe even to the Mars. And um, yeah, this week. NASA had a news conference and was talking about the expected progress on the uh, Orion and was talking about the uh, importance of science, of deep space science and it was pretty interesting um, following this uh, press conference and I'm, well, I'm still following the Orion spacecraft and I guess apart from coming to uh, the poles of our earth it was, uh, would also be a dream of myself to be one of the astronauts of the Orion spacecraft and to maybe fly it to the moon and uh, not to the moon but to a, to a meteoroid um, there's a mission in maybe there's a mission planned not maybe but there's a mission planned of catching a, uh, not a satellite a meteoroid um, and bringing bringing it down to a stable orbit around the moon and the uh, final mission will be launch a manned spacecraft and send it up to the moon and send it to the um, to the asteroid which is which is then um, orbiting around the moon 
and to analyze the asteroid, uh, asteroid. and yes, it uh, well, it would be amazing if I somehow could figure out a way how I could participate at this mission and maybe have uh, a possibility to analyze an asteroid which is uh, which was brought into an orbit around moon and yeah well I'm not sure how I could approach this but if I find a way I will definitely try it out and hopefully uh, become an astronaut maybe and hopefully um, fly to such an astronaut or do other things and maybe become a part of this Orion crew because um, I really like this design and uh, wait a moment I have to eject our uh, external fuel tanks because they are uh, um, empty right now so kachunk and goodbye we will never meet again Okay, now we have lost some drag of our spacecraft and it's starting to burn up again. So be carefully that we are uh, not melting down and have some Kerbal ba barbecue. Okay, yeah, I am so much enjoying this, this uh, progress on the Orion spacecraft and in the, not last week, but I guess several weeks ago they have powered up for the first time the Orion spacecraft which will be used for a first unmanned launch in space and will um, be brought in a high trajectory um, above the Earth surface and finally return to the, Earth, um, to the Earth's surface again um, to test out the launch system and also to test out all the re-entry systems so that the Orion spacecraft will survive the re-entry effects and won't disintegrate in during this process of returning to our atmosphere. So um, yeah, this spacecraft was powered up for the first time and yeah, it was a great moment and currently NASA is working on the um, on the support module uh, that will have all the engines and fuel tanks and batteries and so on and I guess it was this week they have posted also a new uh, picture of the uh, progress of this this um, support mu module and everything is working fine and it's yeah <laughs> As I said, as I said so, so often, it's just amazing and I'm looking forward to see more of this great prog uh, project and yeah, if I find a way I will hopefully maybe become a part of it but I'm not sure because I'm living in good old Europe so um, I guess the first um, the first agency I can approach is the, um, the European Space Agency and here yeah, I'm not sure if the Europeans are able to, um, to provide an astronaut for the Orion spacecraft because it's a NASA project but um, well to become an astronaut would be an honor enough and even just just in uh, just is such a bad word for this uh, and fly even up to the ISS would be still amazing thing and um, yeah this would be also a dream of mine apart from going to the poles of our earth so yeah I'm I'm not sure how I will do this. Um, during all the interviews of um, of the astronauts that are currently at the ISS or returned from the ISS, all said, "Do what you like, what you are, uh, what you enjoy, and if you do so, you and you are very good at your what you are doing. You might be able to even become an astronaut because 
there are not so much requirements um, as say you have to be uh, whatever an astrophysicist or something like this to become an astronaut so maybe I figure out a way how I can approach even this and live my dream and finally become an astronaut and fly high up in space maybe we'll, we will see in, in the near future in the near future but I have to say I have to remain realistic and I guess becoming an astronaut is very unrealistic for me but um, time will tell male be uh, male male maybe I'm able to manage it so yeah we will see in the near future and until then I can play to be an astronaut by playing Kerbal Space Program and launching rockets and uh, feeling free to think about uh, being an astronaut so so much about this so much about my uh, future pa future plans I would call or future ideas what I would love to do and yeah so much about that um, what else still I I will encourage you to get in contact with me if you are like to know something else about myself or if you have a question about aviation or um, any related things to airplanes and what else so leave me a comment leave me also a comment what you think about my episodes and what about what you think about my let's play series and yeah I guess so much about that we are currently approaching now the ice cape of the South Pole um, I hope we can expect in a short amount of time that we are reach the South Pole and our nav ball and our camera will start to rotate again so we have the clear indication that we are currently passing the North Pole uh, no, not the South, North Pole, the South Pole of Kerbin and this will mean that we've managed our second important mission of reaching the uh, poles of Kerbin and the next episode will cover the um, flight back to the Kerbal Space Center and will also give us some useful data if our space of our not spacecraft our aircraft is able to maybe do the um, round trip around Kerbin which will be the upcoming mission and if we have enough fuel in our space um, it's, no, I'm saying it again in our aircraft then I won't have to um, do a, in another incarnation of this aircraft and we can start right away with our round trip around Kerbin and if I see that there might be a problem and we need more fuel then we have to improve our aircraft again but um, enough of that this for now now we have to prepare our descent because we are now over the ice caps we can oh I haven't used this beautiful view of Kirk I haven't used it in the return flight to from the North Pole and I haven't used it as often as I should have done it in this um, flight up to the South Pole so here here we go have a nice look out of Kirk's window and Yes, as I said, descent. let's descend to the thicker parts of the atmosphere so we are able to um, have a better use of our control surfaces and uh, also being able of turning our aircraft and um, flying some maneuvers after we have reached the um, South Pole and do a second la and do also a landing at the South Pole with the spacecraft um, not with the spacecraft with the aircraft and to plant a flag as we normally do okay 
we have descended a bit. We are now in thicker parts of the atmosphere. Let's throttle up a bit. Let's throttle up a bit. So we are able to um, level up, level out, or level our aircraft and stay at an altitude of about 10 kilometers above surface. So we can fly towards the south pole and hopefully reach it in a short amount of time. When do we reach it? and won't fly past it. Oh well, uh, we have to reach it because if we even fly past it then the nav ball would turn uh, as well because um, then we would start flying up north so it has to turn if we, if we miss the north pole. Oh and here we see our, our good old friend the moon. It's coming slowly above the horizon of Kerbin. Hello Moon, Moon, good old friend. As I already said so often, someday we will reach you with our space planes and land on you and plant a flag on your face. As we are currently training on the Earth, uh, not Earth, on Kerbin. for the great moment that the nav ball starts turning around and we have finally reached our uh, main goal. starts turning, I guess, yes, does it? I guess we are almost there. Yes, I guess we have officially reached the, the South Pole. The camera starts turning a bit, the Nefball starts turning and I'm in a pretty and I'm not flying any turns, so yes, we have reached the South Pole. Awesome. Another mission accomplished. Okay. Now it's time to descend towards the surface or the ice of the South Pole and prepare our landing so we are able to plant our flag and uh, have, a, have a party because we've managed to reach the South Pole of Kerbin, our second important goal of the space program and aircraft program. And the moon is still watching above us and watching over us and enjoying our flight as we reach the South Pole. Okay, let's have a look of Kirk. The beautiful white surface of the ice capes. Ok, 
okay, we are coming down. Let's prepare our final approach to land on the ice again. almost done our descent so let's lower our gear and I guess it will be interesting as well with this really low sun to see the current height of my my final approach Looking good. And touchdown. Awesome. We've made it. We've landed on the surface of the uh, South Pole. Awesome. Okay. Finally, we are here. What about our fuel? Okay. We have only used half. No two-thirds of this fuel tank and we have so much fuel left so I am excited to see how much fuel is left when we uh, reach um, Kerbal Space Center again because this will mean it's a halfway around the uh, planet and if we have enough fuel left then we are able to do a flight around Kerbin with this uh, aircraft also as well and two and uh, let's have an EVA. So, grab? No, not... What? Uh, this was wrong. Okay. No. Grab? Yes, here we go. Okay, Kirk. You are the first Kerman Kerbal on the surface of the South Pole. Let's move over there. And this time I will plant the flag a little bit uh, uh, further away from my aircraft because I won't be in danger again of um, running into it. And um, yeah, and destroying it or destroying my aircraft or doing anything else stupid. Okay. Let's plant the flag. Here we go. Cut trunk. And yes. South pole. Nicht pile. Not pile. Pole. We've made it. Awesome. Okay. We've made it to the South Pole. We are still alive. We haven't damaged our aircraft this time. So all I need to say to conclude this, mi uh, this mission and this episode is the same as usual. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you do so, please leave me a comment, please like my video and please become a subscriber to my channel. My name is Ebi. Until next time, see you!